for the week of March 5th, 2023. Big week in a big month. That's what I got to say about it. So first things first. Saturn changes signs on Tuesday, leaves Aquarius, leaves his, se yeah, his second home sign of Aquarius and moves into Pisces. That's a big deal. A lot to talk about with that. We will get to that in a special video that is coming out on Tuesday. Now, I was going to put it out earlier, but then I thought, well, I already put out the March forecast. You know, we only need so many videos per week, right? You know, two is enough. So, that video will be out on Tuesday, March 7th. That is the that is the midweek video for this coming week. Now, Saturn changing signs is a big deal. We want to pay a lot of attention to what happens just as Saturn leaves and as he enters, as he leaves Aquarius looking for a little recap of social justice issues and collective who's well, all of the Saturn and Aquarius issues that we've been dealing with. And as he moves into Pisces, we'll be looking for issues that are really key to Saturn's time in Pisces. I would look health of the oceans, uh, refugee status and things like that. But you'll watch the video and then you'll pick up on what all that's going to be about. But watch the news Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday. And on top of all, we have the Virgo full moon is also on Tuesday. That's the same time. And so the Virgo full moon is giving us a little of that full moon lunacy. It is bringing things to light. Now, right about this time, almost all the planets are all together in one section of the zodiac. And the moon is the only one who is standing apart. Luna is standing apart from the other planets and reflecting the light back. And that's kind of an indication of us being able to get a little bit of perspective on things. Now, lunacy, you know, the full moon, people go a little bit crazy. And I wouldn't say that that's an impossibility, but this moon is in Virgo. So let's not think we're going to go too nuts with the full moon in Virgo. It's a little bit more subdued maybe than last month's Leo full moon. Next month's Libra. And then we have a couple, yeah, with some sub subdued full moons coming up. Anyways, we have a lot of excitement going on. And I think that the full moon will pick up on that without necessarily adding all that much to it. But it's time for getting perspective on things. So that's the key to the beginning of the week. We have the full moon. That full moon, as Adam Bernstein over at the, uh, the Medium channel is always pointing out, is at 16. It's not that he's always pointing out. He keeps pointing out that things happen at 16 degrees. And 16 degrees is the degree of the is the number of the of the tower card in tarot and with pluto still slogging through the 29th degree of capricorn we are really looking at a tower kind of situation we're looking at a, a sort of energy of bringing down those structures that need to come down and that's true in the collective as we know and it's true in our personal lives as well now, here's another thing about this week that I want you to think about. Whatever else is going on this week, Saturn changing signs and things like that. This week is not next week. And next week is really not a great week for taking care of practical matters. So if you have something that needs to get done, do it this week. Do it this week. I would say sometime after Tuesday would probably be your best bet. But if it's Monday or Tuesday or something like that, that's okay, too. And I don't know if you really want to catch that full moon Saturn changing signs energy on Tuesday. You know, it's maybe not the best time for some real serious decision or, you know, definitive action. You know, I don't know if I'd open a business necessarily or something like that. But if you got something to do that's kind of practical, you know, if you've got to uh, book a trip, if you've got to... Uh, submit a report, get working on something, I would I would probably do it this coming week. If you did it last week, that would have been good too. But I would I would try to get to it this week. Next week, just take some time off as we well, well, we'll talk about that next week. Not that nothing is happening next week, but we'll we'll get to it. We have some relatively calm energy through the back part of the week. 
the moon is still relatively full. We still have, you know, I mean, I wouldn't say that nothing is happening or anything like that. But as we get to the weekend, as we, we'll feel it on Friday, very strong on Saturday. And some of this stuff is happening on Sunday, which would be next week's forecast. But it really fits better with this week. And so a lot of stuff for relationships happening on the weekend. A list of things that are going on would include partnership asteroid Juno at 29 degrees Aries squaring Pluto, right? So we're talking about the potential for big changes in relationship status. We also have Venus in a nice trine relationship, sextile relationship with Mars. These two, what, in 2021, they didn't have any harmonious aspects at all. Anyway, Venus is in Aries, which is Mars' sign, and Mars is out in Gemini, which it's okay. And so we have a fairly good potential to build on things in relationship. It ought to just be a kind of nice energy. It's really uh, it is not insignificant that this good relationship energy with Venus in Aries happens at the same time when the partnership energy of Juno and Pluto is somewhat stressed. Now, if you're in a good place in your partnership, nothing bad is going to happen. This is not, this is not, you know, I mean, that that's true of any astrological aspect. But if your partnership has been under some sort of stress, well, this could be a little uncomfortable. This could be a break it time, make it or break it time. If your partnership is in a good place and you really want to say this is something this could be a good time for that as well. But I feel that, you know, relationships that are at a hinge point, for better or worse, that's a real relationship term, isn't it? Relationships that are at a hinge point, for better or worse, are really going to feel this. This is coming up, I want to just say Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday of next week, December, March 10th, 11th, and 12th. Now, on top of all, Jupiter has two big meetings with Vesta and with Chiron. So Jupiter, Vesta, and Chiron are making one big meeting together in Aries. And this is an interesting kind of energy here. Um, I would say that it could play out. It relates to relationships and partnership and things like that. Vesta has a lot to do with a very sexual kind of energy in Aries, right? In in Mars sign of Aries. So we're feeling that this is a strong sort of sexual charge to it. Jupiter increases things. And then Chiron gets into the mix. And you know, Chiron is the whole wounded healer type of thing. You could draw your own conclusions. I would say that this sort of seems to me to be this kind of thing of like autonomy. It's a sexual autonomy. Read that a couple of different ways. But I think that there is this kind of this is what I'm about, this is what I'm doing. I'm stating, I'm stating who I am and what it what works for me. Merge this with the various partnership energies of Mars and Venus and with Pluto and Juno. And I'm not exactly sure that we're going to have a quiet time of things. Could be really good. Could be really good if things are in a good place. Could be really tense if they're not. So be aware of that as we get into the weekend. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it is time to clear things out. You know what happens with Juno, though? As soon as she leaves Pluto, as soon as she leaves Pluto, she moves into Taurus, and then she makes a nice sextile to Saturn. So what winds up being maybe a tense moment where we have to get everything out there and state what we're about and say this is how it's going to go is followed by an opportunity to sort of put things together and you know pick up the pieces or something along those lines it's an exciting week i'm excited to see what happens with saturn i'm excited to see what happens at that full moon as for the end of the week well i'm not excited but you know maybe you are that's good enough and again, when you have some practical stuff to do, we're looking at this week. I would say, too, that with the Scorpio moon putting its fingers on that uh, on that partnership energy towards the weekend, uh, I, I'm, I'm really feeling strongly that if you have something that you got to get done, you want to look for the Libra moon, 
not that it doesn't have its challenges like a square to pluto as its last aspect but i i'm thinking you want to take care of things right around midweek if you can that's that's your that's your area for getting things done with the least amount of resistance and excitement scorpio moon you know it, it's a it's a little protective for sure um it will be making a nice aspect to the ruler of scorpio pluto as its last aspect so that's good so the weekend energy you know what you feel on friday saturday sunday is some bumpy tense energy could very well smooth out by the time we are done with the weekend but I'm thinking that you might want to avoid it if you're looking for, you know, if you're looking for an easy pass through on something, you know, you know, you aren't always looking for an easy pass through. Okay. Catch the Saturn video on Tuesday. Just subscribe and then, you know, and hit the little bell so that you get the notifications and then everything will take care of itself. Yeah.